Okay, we're going to continue our tutorial and now that we've done the ID operations uh, we're going to go ahead and do some live milling on the face to create the shape, the hex shape, on the inside of this part. So what we're going to do now is take a look at maybe the shape on the inside. So looking at the shape itself we see all of these faces make up a hex. Now this is obviously not going to be turned so we're going to have to mill that shape. So recognizing that you know right now we're not really worried about too many things I'm just going to do a simple cut around this shape and when we see a shape like this it's made up of multiple faces. So you can see that I can select individual faces inside of the ID here by simply clicking on them and you know I'm using the uh, highlight method I should I guess explain the highlight method down here at the uh, lower right you have the capability to use dynamic highlighting or you can use the old style highlight which since I know it I prefer it where you turn on the old style and you can select using the left and right right mouse buttons so I'm gonna use the old style I'm used to it and what I want to do is show that you can uh, do propagation so when you select things on the screen how did I do that I grabbed all of those faces that make up the outside shape of that hex well on propagation this is the second icon so you have your XYZ down here and then you have your select filter and then the next one over is called propagation and if I click on that it will bring up this window and if you look there's four different types of edge commands so tangent edges and opposite edges so we're set to opposite edge right now so if I hold the shift key and I pick an edge it's gonna look for all the opposite edges and it's gonna you know cycle through those faces those elements until it selects everything in that shape now this is really good for wire EDM or for closed pockets or things like this where um, you know the shape lends itself for that type of a selection. So now that I've selected all of those solid faces I can come to the feature toolbar and we can go ahead and use one of the solid featuring commands and I'm going to use uh, we have pocket wall and hole uh, we're going to use the wall feature again you have your help blurb there and I'm going to go ahead and select that and it creates a profile for me so this profile defines that shape and now I can apply a rough a finish operation whatever I want to do uh, we're gonna keep it pretty simple first thing that I want to do is I want to evaluate this shape so one of the easy ways to do that is you can just pick like this one of these radius blends here in the corner if you all these radii are likely have the same value uh, so I'm gonna go to the solids area and we can see that my you know radius is a quarter so I need a half inch tool or smaller to get into that shape without leaving material so okay I have the solids tab on if we go to the home tab we can go to show hide and it's listed here so just make sure that if you don't have it you want to go ahead and activate that now uh, I don't sure I'm not sure if this was covered yet I don't remember um, what we can do though if you have these tabs and these windows on your screen and you see that I have these all kind of aligned nicely on the left and the right side of my screen here how did I do that really quick I'm just gonna when you have something on the screen you know wherever it is you can grab it and then you can see that I got these little 
these little arrows and stuff that appear all over the place and it's going to kind of highlight when I move my mouse so I'm clicking and dragging so I click and then move and then if I move into this one here I have a new little like plus sign here and it tells me how it's going to do it so I do, do I want to make like a double window with one on top and one on bottom with this one on top or do I want to put it in the bottom or on the left or on the right actually I want it to be part of this window like the other one so I'm just gonna release my mouse when my uh, little arrow my cursor is on that middle box and when I do that it will appear as one of the tabs that I can switch through this keeps my screen nice and clean so you guys can play with that a little bit on your own so what I'm gonna do here is apply the operation I'm gonna come to uh, profile and I should say if you haven't created a tool yet you know obviously you wanna create that tool if I look at my machine setup here I uh, I do have a tool here actually this one is a tool but we can't use it it's in a static holder so we have this live tool here and if I look at my tool uh, list I have this tool is uh, which station is that is that the four millimeter no <clears throat> it is this guy which is a 10 millimeter with a one and a half uh, millimeter radius so we have a radius to end mill I'm just going to use this one since it's already created and it will fit remember that was a half inch diameter uh, so anything 12 millimeters or smaller should be fine so let's go ahead and program that feature so again on the features tab make sure that you have your feature selected and going back to the design we're gonna go to milling and now we can select from different types of milling uh, now remember we turned this diameter this ID diameter to this face already so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a contouring pass um, you know maybe I'm I'm not gonna do uh, like a like a you know multi-pass roughing or anything pocketing or anything like that I'm just gonna do a single pass uh, around that shape just to keep it simple for the tutorial but uh, the the process here is making your feature applying your operation and then um, you know setting your parameters and simulating and then making your code so we're gonna pick that radius to end mill and uh, you know put in we'll put in some uh, some speeds and feeds here and under the strategy now remember you can update the stock for the next operation and we can use the previous stock set to yes so what it's going to do is it's gonna look at what my ID turn diameter was for that inner shape and see how much stock is left for me and then uh, this one rotary machining we're gonna come back to this this can be set to yes or no so right now it's set to yo to no which means that I'm going to basically do an XY style of contour so your machine has to have Y axis for this so we're going to go ahead and um, you know the depth here I'm gonna right click because this depth comes from something that I previously set so I'm gonna right click on this and say system default and what it does is it reads the depth of my feature right here so we're gonna do the whole thing in a single pass we're gonna be offset to the left uh, that's all fine um, we're gonna come to the links tab and uh, what I'll do here and you can see here that we can set different I'm not gonna go into all of the you know this is all covered in the help files uh, you know we want to keep it simple so the full clearance I'm gonna make this point one and we're gonna select maybe the model as my full clearance reference point so I see now that uh, my lead-in and lead-out radii might want to be adjusted looked at that very quickly as I hit OK um, also we can see where we turned and the radius of the end mill is larger than the radius of the turned shape so we might want to change either the tool 
or you know whatever that we're going to do in terms of ordering tools for this for this part but uh, the simulation shows me that right away which is nice so I can see that this is going to be an issue on the finished part before I take it out to the machine and I can make an adjustment for that I can come to the uh, tooling tab and look at this tool here and just double click it so we're gonna make this a half millimeter and we get a new operation because it rebuilds the operation here and now we can see that that radius blends in nicely and we can see where the uh, you know the stock and the part are going to be so um, I can see on on this radius lead-in you know to edit an operation you just double click the operation and you know you can change whatever you want so here under the links maybe I want to change something about how my uh, lead-in distance and radius are going to behave so what do I want to do here maybe I want to um, set these to be exactly the same so we'll do 0.4 for both of those and uh, we'll do a 50 thousandths radius and when you change those values you'll see your uh, lead in and lead out values or you know the graphics of the toolpath update so you can see so you know the the programmer once they start uh, understanding what it is that they're looking at on the screen they'll be able to tell right away what's going on so this was our first milling operation uh, we're gonna go ahead and simulate this so under the simulation I'm gonna go ahead and select play and that was pretty quick so let me slow things down a little bit and let's go to the program view and I'll grab the link so the turret comes from tool change position and then we see because we had uh, rotary machining no or off we saw the turret moving in X and Y so what I'm gonna do now is just double click this and say you know under the general tab here on that rotary machining we're gonna set this to yes and I'm gonna say okay and now I'm gonna re-simulate that operation now we'll see the part spinning so the tool is gonna come in the tool is turning and the part is turning as well so this keeps the part uh, the tool on center line so that um, if our machine did not have y-axis it would not be an issue and we can toggle between the two styles of operations no problem so this is your first uh, milling live milling uh, operation and uh, next we're gonna take a look at doing some OD work